We're going out to the farm in Gettysburg and going to build a watermelon patch. It's beautiful. My hands are greasy from working on the, the tractors and stuff. This is my spot. So basically, this area right here. We're going to get the grass up, we're going to rototill, we're going to prep the soil, and we're going to get ourselves about a million watermelons. Maintenance free little zone that we can come back to in the fall and enjoy seeing what we can grow. This one is dedicated to John Kohler. John, this is for you, man. Thank you. I'm out of breath. That is a lot of work. Okay. Can I try? No, dude. Not yet. Maybe later when I when I'm comfortable with it, I'll let you try. That's my little buddy Leo. He's helping uh, rototill the soil. We're in this for the long haul planning on making a pretty cool zone. You can see the, the scene here is gorgeous. Let me, let me show you this. Like we're camping out here too, but look at this, right? Amazing, just amazing. What a setting to grow our watermelons. And we have so many. Last year when I was juicing like crazy with my watermelons, I saved all the seeds and many of them are for a yellow watermelon with yellow flesh and a white rind. Some of them have like a torpedo shape. We have red element watermelons, little small ones with the dark red and little tiny seeds and a striped green and black stripe. Man, we're gonna have a good time. I'll keep updating you too. I'm excited. Look at the watermelon patch. It's very nice. I like the feeling. Oh no, where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Oh, it's a beautiful machine. What do you think? Watermelon. Yes. Watermelons. Water Woo! <laughs> I can see them already. In this my is, mind, I can see like a hundred of them here. Liquefied watermelon. <laughs> watermelon. What a setting. What a setting. Like, right? Look at this. <laughs> ridiculous. For, to use that I made at home with my Joraform compost tumbler. But uh, I'm just going to use that in the areas where we seed because I only have a, half a bucket's worth. Well, there's no better composter than the digestive tract of a horse. Right? They must eat some really good stuff. Nutrient rich. This is the circle of life. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it? Somewhere between 12 and 15 hours of time rototilling over three days. And we have a plot of approximately, I'd say uh, 15, maybe 20 by 40, 20 by 40 approximately. So what does that come out to? 800, something like that? I'm not actually sure. Uh, but the main thing is we're about ready to go. We're gonna plant because I'm not gonna be back here for a while and I want a maintenance-free situation. I do have my compost from my house. 
about half a bucket's worth, so I'm going to mix that up with a, a little bit of soil and use that in the little um, mounds that I build. The mounds are going to be separated by four feet laid out. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, kind of like that throughout the thing. So I'm going to make some mounds. We're going to add some water to those mounds and just hope that the seeds germinate. Hope we get some sun, some uh, rain later in the week because we won't be back here for maybe a month. And we'll just see what we get. It's just season one, year one. You can see the barn. It's so beautiful here. What a great setup. We did end up using some horse manure that was older. I tried to pick out the older horse manure that had been sitting outside, sort of aging a bit. Hopefully we'll see. And I really tilled it in deep, so I, I don't think it's going to overwhelm the soil. Uh, because I know if you use compost when it's too fresh, it's a problem. So. I left room on either side. We also had an interesting thing. Artifacts, like these artifacts. And uh, we had a whole bunch of other artifacts from, you know, many, many years of farming. All kinds of crazy metal from different tools and horse bits and plows and who knows if that's a, that almost looks like a wagon wheel. That thing is probably, that could be a hundred years old, easy, at this farm. Nice size watermelon patch. Full sun from 10 in the morning till 10 at night almost. I mean, this is going to get to 12 hours of sun a day. Very, very psyched. Already, the there's like little butterflies and moths and spiders and all kinds of little creatures are love in this tilled soil. It's as deep as the tines on that machine, so probably about a foot deep of really loamy, soft soil. You know, it really is nice. Now, you know, I don't know the character of it, but in general, it's got a lot of oxygen in it now. It's mixed up. One of these. Yeah, what do you got there? Yep. Final little rake to pick up some, just the top level of grass, and we're done. We have made an amazing bed of soil, and about to plant our seed. Now it's getting hot. Feeling heat now. 24 mounds. We're going to have an array of 24 mounds. Plant the seeds in. Compost. Thank you, John Kohler. No Thank way. you, John Kohler. <laughs> watermelon time. We are planting some nice watermelons. Love it. Just, just don't pack it down. Come on, come on, look at that setting. Now we're gonna see them come up. It's big, it turned out to be 16 by uh, 39 feet. Wow, I'm psyched. This was a huge effort. About 15 hours worth of work to get to this, but well worth it. Maybe more in total man hours, person hours. One more time, I want to say thank you to John Kohler for inspiring me to grow my own food. And uh, thank you to my friends for providing this space and their beautiful, many hundred year old family farm out here in Pennsylvania. And many thanks to my farmer's market friends at the Brookland Farmer's Market in DC from where I purchased the vast majority of these watermelons, ate them and uh, got the seeds. So we'll have to see how this comes out. Peace and love and seasonal fruit. This is a postscript. P.S. Everybody's finally gone. We're heading out of here. Final little watering. 
we have six different kinds, four mounds each. And uh, we did a ring of approximately 10 seeds. Sometimes we put two seeds in each hole of 10. So we expect there to be, in some cases, some are going to thrive and others might not. But we expect to have to thin them out. Some are going to work, some aren't going to work. Some will germinate, some will not. Check out the hay coming in in the background. This is a real working farm.